What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're gonna be having a very deep look at the hop-ups in Apex Legends. Now, hop-ups are those attachments that only work with specific guns, and in many cases, they fundamentally change that particular gun, whether that be through fire rate or damage, or just how it behaves in general. So today, we're gonna dive deep so you guys can see exactly what the different timings are, and where it makes sense, I'll show either before and after, or a side-by-side -side of each one of these hop-ups. So without further ado, let's hop into the first hop-up, and this is the only legendary one that we have so far, and this is the Turbocharger. Now, the Turbocharger can be used on two different weapons. It can be used on the Devotion as well as the Havoc. Both of these are energy weapons, and it does have a slightly different effect on each of these. With the Devotion, this gun is quite unique because its fire rate starts off relatively slow and then it ramps up to its maximum fire rate. Without the Turbocharger hop-up, it will take you 15 rounds to reach your maximum fire rate. So for those first 15 rounds, they will be ramping up slowly. Once you get that Turbocharger on the Devotion, it will now reach its maximum fire rate in just 10 shots, so it ramps up faster. And in addition to that, your maximum rate of fire is slightly faster with Turbocharger. This change to the maximum rate of fire is very, very slight. You probably wouldn't even notice it, but it is extremely noticeable how much faster you ramp up while using turbocharger instead of doing this side by side i feel like this is best illustrated doing before and after so the first clip i'll play is without turbocharger and the second clip is with turbocharger So as you can probably tell, a very noticeable change in how fast it ramps up, and this is great for your gunfights. So the combination of the turbocharger with the devotion is excellent. Now let's move on to the second gun that allows you to use turbocharger on it, and this is the Havoc. Now with the Havoc, instead of ramping its rate of fire up over time, instead, when you initially pull the trigger with the Havoc, there is a slight delay before it starts firing. Based on my testing, this delay is approximately 450 milliseconds, or roughly half a second. This is something that definitely holds the Havoc back. In a lot of situations, as you're ramping up, the enemy is already putting shots into you, and this often makes a difference between life and death. However, if you have the Turbocharger hop up on the Havoc, it essentially eliminates that time. Technically, there's still like a one frame charge up time, but that's pretty much negligible. And therefore, the Havoc now behaves like a standard full auto rifle. And personally, I really don't like using the Havoc unless I happen to have the Turbocharger. If I don't have a Turbocharger, the only time you'll catch me using this gun is right at the beginning of the game if there's simply nothing better laying around. Now, something that is really interesting about the Havoc is it's the only gun currently in the game that you have the option to attach two different hop-ups to. So we already went through the Turbocharger. The next hop-up we're going to have a look at on the Havoc is Select Fire. Now, with Select Fire, you have the option to fire at full auto like you normally would. It will have that standard charge-up time before you start firing or you can toggle over and put it in what I like to call sniper mode. In this mode, you still have a charge up time. You actually have a slightly longer charge up time before firing your shot at about 600 milliseconds. And when you fire that single shot, you actually are firing five rounds at once. It's actually more like a shotgun. So you're firing five rounds in a really tight spread. It turns it into a hit scan. And assuming you get a nice square hit on your target, especially at closer ranges, you can deal up to 55 damage to the body. Now at longer ranges in this single fire sniper mode, you will likely not be dealing the full 55 damage, and this is due to the fact that there's actually some slight spread with these five shots that are going off at once. So it's actually kind of like a shotgun with really tight spread and it's a hit scan. This is why you'll often see reduced damage at longer ranges. Technically there isn't a damage drop off range, but you will likely be hitting fewer of these, I'm going to call them pellets, at longer ranges to the mid torso, and therefore you often deal slightly less damage. This brings us to the next gun that we can use Select Fire on, and this is the Prowler. Now with the Prowler, this is a standard 5 round burst SMG with a 1200 round per minute burst. It's extremely fast firing burst, but it does have that burst delay. And when you get the Select Fire hop up on here, it allows you to swap over to full auto mode. Now with full auto, its overall fire rate is reduced quite significantly. It becomes roughly 700 rounds per minute rather than 1200, but you're able to fire at full auto, so you're putting out sustained damage. Now personally, full auto is definitely the way to go on the Prowler if you can find one of these select fire hop-ups. I'm not a huge fan of the Prowler when it's in its standard mode, but the moment you get this hop-up on here and switch it to full auto, this thing absolutely melts people up close. So that covers it for select fire. Those are the only two guns that we are currently able to use the select fire hop-up on. Now let's move into the Precision Choke. With this one, we can use it on two different guns. We can use it on the Triple Take Sniper Rifle as well as the Peacekeeper Shotgun. So starting it off with the Triple Take, if you're not using Precision Choke, it fires three bullets in a perfect horizontal line, but they are spread out horizontally. 
If you hit fire, they're spread out a lot. If you aim down sight, it does tighten up pretty significantly, but there is still some spread. So at longer ranges, especially, you're likely to only hit a couple of those pellets. When you get the precision choke on the triple take, this allows you to tighten up that spread in four different stages. So the initial stage is when you first aim down sight, it'll be as if you didn't have the precision choke on at all. Then every 500 milliseconds, you'll advance to the next stage where it tightens up a little bit at a time, all the way up until the fourth stage where the reticle will now glow blue. This is the maximum charge that you can get with the precision choke on the triple take. And at this point, all three of those bullets will go in the same hole. So in most mid-range gunfights, I would say precision choke isn't necessary at all on the triple take because your spread is tightened up pretty considerably just by aiming down sight without the hop up. But once you start getting into those really long range shots with the triple take, especially if you're aiming for the head or something like that, then the precision choke helps quite a bit. So overall, the triple take generally doesn't need it, but I would consider it to be just a nice bonus to have that precision choke equipped. As for the precision choke on the Peacekeeper shotgun, it's basically the exact same thing, but in shotgun form. So the timings are all the same, there's four different stages, it takes you 500 milliseconds to progress through each one of those stages, so therefore one and a half seconds total from the moment you start aiming down sight, until the moment you are fully charged. And with this, instead of all of the pellets going in the exact same hole, it's not nearly that tight. What it does is it reduces your overall spread by 80%, which is extremely solid, especially considering the fact that there's no damage drop off in this game. And therefore you can actually kind of snipe with the precision choke on the Peacekeeper. And also in those close to mid range situations, if you're aiming for the head while using precision choke, you can often down people in just one shot, regardless of the armor that they're using. So finally, this just leaves us with one more hop up, and this is Skull Piercer Rifling. Now with this, we have the ability to put it on the Longbow DMR as well as the Wingman. And this one is super straightforward. It doesn't really change how the gun feels at all, unlike a lot of the other hop ups. All this does is it increases your headshot damage. So with the Longbow DMR, we get a standard headshot multiplier of two times, and it deals 55 damage to the torso. And therefore, it would normally deal 110 damage, but with the Skull Piercer Rifling, that will increase your headshot multiplier to two and a half times, which will now give you 136 damage to the head. This means unless the enemy has a level three or level four helmet, you will be getting a one shot kill on them if you hit them in the head with the Longbow and Skull Piercer. As for the Wingman, it's the exact same story. The headshot multiplier goes from two up to 2.5. And this means our standard headshot damage, assuming you're shooting somebody without a helmet, goes from 90 up to 113. So somebody without a helmet equipped, you'll be able to get a one-shot kill every single time with the Wingman and Skull Piercer. Whereas if they do have a helmet and full health, you won't be getting that one-shot kill, but you will be getting them very low. For me personally, this is often the weapon I will use as my secondary or my finishing weapon. It'll be the Wingman with Skull Piercer if I can find it, but even without Skull Piercer, the Wingman is very solid. And it's just so satisfying when you land that nice one-shot headshot on an enemy. And with that, that wraps it up for all of the hop-ups that we currently have in Apex Legends. As for the future, I do anticipate that as they come out with new guns, there will also be new hop-ups that will be coming. And if that happens, I will be sure to break that down in a video so you know exactly how it works. But at least so far, those are all the hop-ups we have. And I'd like to know in the comment section below, out of all of these hop-up and weapon combinations, which one is your personal favorite? For me, I'd have to say it's a pretty close call between the Precision Choke with the Peacekeeper and the Skull Piercer on the Wingman. Both of these are great just because they're huge damage potential with just one shot. They're excellent for finishing weapons, or in a lot of cases, just use them as a primary, and you can go in there with quite a bit of confidence. Now, as you guys may or may not know, the YouTube algorithm loves those 10 minute videos, so I am just going to put the end of this gameplay here in the background, so feel free to stick around if you want to watch it. If not, I totally understand. I'd much rather do this than purposely stretch out all the content and make it take as long as possible to cover everything, because it can kind of be annoying when YouTubers do that. But in any case, if you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.